Greetings everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL lecture Microsensors, Implantable Devices and Rod and Surgeries for Biomedical Applications. In this lecture, we will be taking a brief look on 3D printing. So, 3D printing is a new generation of manufacturing technique where we use layer by layer manufacturing for making an object. So, let us have a look live look on what some of the 3D printed devices. So, this is actually a SLA 3D printed object which is actually you can see which is really complicated based on its structure. This is even having a flexible element as well as a ridge in the entire rigid body and now you can see a FDM 3D printed uh, enclosure cap which you can see some of the standoff and uh, like connections which you can place on a uh, box like structure. This is actually FDM 3D printed and you can see another model which is uh, very complicated to make in conventional practices which might require uh, one week or two weeks to uh, do the same thing in a conventional machine process. This thing can uh, attach to a syringe and it will hold the syringe properly. You can see some of the complicated structures here which is, have, which is actually a self locking mechanism too. So, I will just demonstrate how it working. So, this is actually a enclosure for a PFS. So, nowadays 3D printed th uh, devices or 3D printed objects are widely used in almost every industries. You can see 3D printed objects in aerospace industry, healthcare industries, uh, in automotive field or in almost everywhere you are seeing. Nowadays even architecture uses 3D printed models to demonstrate what they are going to build in future. So, the client will get a clear idea about how their dream uh, houses or uh, like even there are some uh, area in the house how it will be look in real life. So, I will just give you a brief history about 3D printing. 3D printing was first developed by Chuck Hull in 1986. Uh, now, he uh, formed a company known as 3D system which is one of the most famous or most renowned industry company in 3D printing industry. The first system or first 3D printer he generated was known as stereolithography 3D printer. You can just uh, see the printer in the screen. This was the first printer that he uh, developed. It is actually known as SLA 3D printer where you use a uh, resin vat or resin and um, that resin will be cured by UV lasers. So, after that around the end of 1980s, new technologies like FDM or fused deposition modeling and SL selective laser sintering such kind of new technologies were introduced. Around 1996 Chuck Hull itself uh, make his first 3D printer commercially available that means uh, public can buy those 3D printers and use it and it take almost 10 years to make first high definition color 3D printer till now or till then there are only 3D printers which can uh, print in single colors or mono colors. After two, uh, 2005, uh, Spectrum Z510 introduced a printer which can be print in multiple color and it was also having very high definition. So, now we are in era of rapid manufacturing where we used to uh, make an object really quickly. So, uh, earlier if we need to make an object then you need to sketch in papers and convert it into some kind of objects and all. Now, there are softwares known as cam CAD softwares meaning computer aided designing software where you can design the entire thing in a computer and give that model for manufacturing. So, rapid manufacturing can be uh, like classified into two main categories subtractive manufacturing where you will be removing layer by layer uh, and making an object we will discuss uh, detail about it in coming uh, slides and then we have additive manufacturing like 3D printing. So, what is subtractive manufacturing? Subtractive manufacturing is a, uh, a process of uh, creating an object or creating a final product by removing uh, material from the uh, initial, uh, initial large piece of material. So, uh, in subtractive manufacturing you can even use uh, wood, uh, plastic or even metal. And uh, the main advantage of the subtractive manufacturing process is it can uh, like through this process we can achieve very high tolerance and uh, very high surface finish. So, 
nowadays also in most of the aerospace industries and everything we are using subtractive manufacturing to produce high quality and high surface finish uh, product by products and in uh, like there are seven axis cnc machines where you can uh, produce much complex shapes uh, like um, very intrinsic shape which is having even uh, like objects inside some of the uh, shapes like that structures can also be manufactured in subtractive manufacturing so now we will be jump to 3d printing so how a 3d printed object can be made, uh, made? there are a list of step or list of procedures which you need to follow then only you will uh, able to make it uh, like object from 3d printing so first one is of course you need to make a model how will you make it uh, for 3d printing you must uh, rely on some uh, if you need to make a model from scratch then you need to uh, use a CAD software to make a model and then you need to convert that model into some of other uh, like machine known languages and depending upon which kind of technology you are using you need to uh, like process the object so you can use it for uh, end application so that's uh, we will discuss more about the workflow yeah so to make an object to make an uh, 3d printable object first you need a file right so for example just look at this mouse if you need to uh, make this mouse if you need to make a 3d model of this mouse you have multiple options the first one being you can actually take the dimension of every coordinate of this mouse and then you can use a 3d software or 3d uh, modeling software to make that mouse other one is you can use a 3d scanner okay what's 3d scanner 3d scanner is actually a camera like device which we can use to scan the entire object that 3d scanner will scan every point of this if you need to make a 3d model of this mouse that scanner will scan the entire mouse and generate a 3d file or that uh, can be sent for 3d printing so again uh, like the next one is actually CAD software which i just explained you need to build the item from the scratch itself then comes the photo scanning so what is photo scanning nowadays i think uh, you can see miniature models of yourself like um, you can uh, have a printed model of yourself so you will be in a photo booth where you will be covered by hundreds of cameras there will be probably hundreds of cameras all around you and those hundred camera will click your picture at the same time and then that will transfer your image to some computer and the computer will do the post processing and make a 3d file about uh, from those hundred of images so those images uh, like those images we will convert it into a 3d file and then that 3d file <coughs> we will convert it into some of the formats known as stl or uh, obj the stl is the file that file format that we are using for like decades which is the most acceptable 3d printing file format so it's actually a mesh file okay once we generate stl file or um, obj file we will send that file to a slicing machine or slicing software what slicing software now slicing software is a software that's actually dip, uh, like depends upon which machine we are using we will be using different kind of slicing software so those slicing software will uh, slice basically it will slice our um, <coughs> models layer by layer and then it will convert into a uh, like a code or a program which our machine will understand so first uh, we will generate a 3d file then we will convert it into stl file then stl file we will be uh, give it to a slicing software so that slicing software will slice our file into different layer by layer step and then it will generate mostly g code for example if we are using fdm 3d printers it will convert it into g code and then send that file to our printer for making the end object so now let's take a uh, glance of what all the 3d modeling software is available so based upon what we need to create we will select different kind of 3d modeling softwares there are hundreds of 3d modeling software which are free paid which need to be installed on your computer which can be uh, used in online or available for example if you need to make something which is just for animation purpose which you just need to uh, render and see you can use some software kind of blender which is actually widely used in industry for making uh, animation kind of stuffs and everything 
or if you need to make really something which is dimensionally accurate then you need to go something like a SOLIDWORKS or Fusion 360 or Inventors uh, like Inventors software and all. What is, um, why do we need to use SOLIDWORKS or Fusion 360 is because uh, they, these softwares we can make something which is really dimensionally accurate and uh, the reason behind to choose uh, what the correct software is that because we will get more industrial support. Solid, uh, SOLIDWORKS is the software that is mostly uh, like accepted in almost every industry. So if we know SOLIDWORKS then it will be very much easier to adapt from one industry to another. But the one disadvantage is that it, there are no free version or students version available for SOLIDWORKS. So even if you like um, want to learn it you can uh, use Sol Fusion 360 or Inventor and another beauty is that if you know one software then it will be very much easy to shift from one uh, like one software to another because the basic tools used in almost every software is same. So it will be very much easy to migrate from one software to another. Uh, as I said this uh, Fusion 360 and Inventors you will be freely available for students and uh, like self pro uh, students. So uh, you can download that thing and you can uh, like make some models on Fusion 360 or uh, in Inventor and once you master it then you can uh, what shift to SOLIDWORKS. So now we will uh, learn or check different 3D printing technologies. Uh, there are many uh, in this lecture we will only discussing few of those. So first one is fused deposit modeling, FDM 3D printing which is nowadays widely used because of its cost effectiveness and because of the like uh, surface finish it can provide. In FDM 3D printer we will be having a spool of filament, it can be either plastic, it can be metal or it can be ceramic and then we will supply those spool of filament to something known as extruder. Okay, What will extruder do? Uh, it is having motors to take this um, filament and then extruder is having a heated element, it is having a heater inside that which will melt those filaments and this extruder is connected to motors to move in x, y and z axis. So uh, extruder can move all around the print bed and deposit the material wherever we want. So as I said earlier the slicing software will convert those uh, like models to machine specific languages and it will load to this printer. So once it is having the uh, sliced machine data the extruder knows where to put material and where not to put material. <coughs> So there are different kinds of FDM 3D printers, some with, uh, which only support one extruder or one nozzle, some are having multiple nozzles that can uh, support up to uh, 6 or 10 filaments and this specific one is having uh, one uh, like this specific one can support two extruder, uh, two filaments, one which is main material and another one which is actually a support materials. So in FDM uh, printing you must need a support material for overhanging parts, otherwise uh, we, will, we will not get that much high surface finishes. So uh, this is the print bed and once the print is completed you can just simply remove the printed part and if you having a support material if uh, that can be removed either manually or there are support materials known as PVA which is actually water soluble support materials. So once you have the part in your hand you can just simply put those material uh, in some kind of lukewarm water and if you just agitate it or if you just mix it those water soluble material will be so, uh, so, uh, so dissolved into the water and you can take the object without any kind of support materials and those kind of uh, thing will be much more uh, high in surface finish and all. So coming towards the materials used. The most common one we use is ABS and PLA, uh, like PLA is the one that we are using so regularly because of its low melting point and it can be used uh, because of the low melting point and it can be used in almost every 3D printer <coughs> and it will produce really high surface finishes too and even there are high end uh, printers which can support metals like aluminum, copper or stainless steel etc. So now we look to some of the uh, commercially available or different kind of FDM 3D printers. So the one on the top this is actually known as 
Cartesian 3D printer. So here you can see the nozzle which is attached to X axis. So uh, this nozzle can move in X axis and this axis is actually attached to a uh, motor that uh, moves it in Z axis. So here the in this 3D printer the nozzle can move in X axis as well as Z axis where the bed is actually attached to a motor which can move in Y axis. So uh, this nozzle will come down print a layer and the nozzle itself will go up while uh, the x axis movement is controlled by the motor attached in its bed. This, this specific model is Creality Ender 3 which is one of the widely used 3D printer because of its cost effectiveness <coughs> and actually it can also produce uh, much higher resolution prints also. So now you have a metal 3D printer. What is melt? Uh, this works exactly like the one we saw here. Uh, instead of plastic filament, it will take metal filaments. It will take metal metal filaments, and it extruder is that much capable, or it can withstand high temperature up to some uh, 800 or 1200 degrees Celsius. Melt the metal and put on the like print bed. And it, uh, depending upon which kind of printer they are using, nozzle will go up or the print bed will come down and deposit the subsequent layers. And as such, the material uh, like as such the process will go on. <coughs> now we have a delta printer. Delta printer is so much different from that of a Cartesian printer. Here, this is the nozzle, and this nozzle is attached to three motors. Directly, it is attached to three motors, and this these are the three motors. And this three motors will control or will decide uh, where to move this uh, like extruder. These three motors will work simultaneously to move this extruder in X, Y and Z direction. The main disadvantage of this me uh, mechanism is that it can only print, it, it, it can like its print bed can only be a circular one. So uh, the area that it can print is very minimal <coughs> and on the other hand this kind of delta 3d printers are having very high speed like it can print really fast now this is actually known as core x-ray printer which are the most accurate 3d printers available now uh, this one is ultimaker which is a very famous brand so uh, here you can see the bed the bed is actually attached to z axis so here the bed will move up and down while this mo this extruder is moving in x and y direction so uh, and in uh, in the core x-ray printers motors are actually stationary it won't move what is the advantage of uh, making a motor stationary if the motors are stationary it will reduce the inertia on each axis and it will pro provide a precise control of the extruder so here you can see uh, motors are connect, motors are connected to the uh, x axis so once we are when we are moving the axis when we are moving the extruder uh, the motor inertia will also come to play so there will be not that much precise control as we will get in ultimate or as we will get in core x ray printers <coughs> so and another advantage is that the printed thing is moving in z axis like uh, it's moving up and down so uh, in 3D printer, Z axis is the axis which is having the slowest motion, so slowest movement. So after every layer, it will move up or down by only just a 0.1 mm or 0.2 mm depending upon the resolution that we give. So we will be getting a very high surface finish, very, very high uh, quality of print out of these print, these kind of printers. Like there is something known as layer shift in printer. Like we will be able to differentiate between two layers like if it's uh, like uh, we will be easily able to differentiate between two layers which is very common in uh, like this kind of cheap desktop 3d printers but it's very uh, like we can differentiate but which will be very minimal in core x y printers now we will uh, talk about stereolithography printers or sla printers uh, as we discuss sla printers are the like first printers that uh, invented but uh, the thing is it's little bit on the costly slide uh, costly side because of the technology they are using 
on FDM printers we discussed that it is using a solid material to make the object while here we are using liquid materials um, and these liquid materials are actually photopolymers. So, we will be using a liquid material we will be filling that liquid on a vat or some kind of container and then we will be shining UV laser light to that. This UV laser will be very precise that it will be on the range of 25 micrometers or even lesser than that and then we will shine that uh, like spot to particular places where we need object or where we need the resin to be solidified. As once the entire layer is completed then we will be having the print platform which will go either up or down depending upon which kind of printer we are using like it will go up or down and then the same process will repeat once again. So, layer by layer we will be getting a 3D object exactly like in FDM printer but here it will be more precise or more uh, dimensionally accurate. <coughs> and um, we have a wide range of materials too here like uh, we have a standard resin which is just for prototyping and representation purpose and we can even use dental resin which is biocompatible. So, uh, I think all of us have seen uh, dental retainers and aligners. These can be 3D printed using uh, what SLA machines and even jewelry resin. So, uh, if there is a very complicated or very uh, high end uh, models which is very much difficult to make in conventional process, we can actually 3D print it and then we can use that as a mold and engineering resins is basically used for making something which is uh, really rigid and uh, really needs high tolerances for uh, making some prototypes or something. So, these are some of the commercially available SLA 3D printers. Uh, this one is industrial uh, SLA 3D printers which is very big and this is basically used for making some of the prototype level application industry. For example, in the automotive industry if you need to make a car body or a car structure then <coughs> actually you can use the uh, this kind of 3D printers to make the uh, part piece by part piece by piece. Like if you need to make a door you can print the entire thing in single machine and then you can assembly check whether it is fitting or uh, if it is having some kind of modification required or something like that. And then you can move on to final processing like uh, actual die cast mold making and all. <coughs> this is actually Formlabs 3BL which is uh, desktop 3D printing uh, which we will see and discuss more in uh, on lab sessions. Uh, this is actually a desktop 3D printer where you can make a smaller size object. Uh, for engineering applications and even for prototype developments and all. <coughs> Both of these things work similar like with the similar technology only the size is varying here and the industrial 3D printers can work for hours without shutting down and all. And this is the post processing machines. In SLA 3D printers the post processing is a very necessary part. So, what we will we do is that once the part is printed then we will take out the part from the printer bed and then we will put it for a IPA wash. This is actually IPA. This mostly we are we will be using IPA. So IPA washing chamber. We will be putting the part on IPA washing chamber. What it will do is that it will wash the remaining resins that is stuck or stick on to the uh, object that we printed. So in which ways even if we print layer by layer. There will, there will be uh, unwanted resins which are attached to that part. So, once the IPA wash is completed, IPA will uh, dissolve all the uh, non cured material on the printed object. And once IPA is IPA wash is completed, we will generally go for drying it, mostly air drying it. Once it is air dried, it, then we will be placing it in a UV chamber. So, once the part that is straight out from the printer is almost 90 to 95 percent is cured, which might not have the complete mechanical properties of what the uh, resin or what the material is supposed to have. <coughs> so, we will cure it. We will cure again in a UV chamber for different kind of resins will be having different time and different temperature to cure it. Once it is done then the part out of the curing chamber will be having the most or will be having the actual mechanical properties that the uh, material was supposed to have. So, now it is selective laser sintering. The next technology is selective laser sintering technology. <coughs> a 
first we saw uh, solid solid wires to make a uh, 3d model then we saw uh, liquid which is used to make a 3d model now it's powder based manufacturing process so in sls <coughs> what uh, what it is uh, like how sls work is that we will be having a chamber filled with powder and this will be the bed which will be going up and down so at initial stage this bed will be in this level and we will be having a uh, what surplus powder filled in this chambers so and we will be having a laser unit which will be deflect the laser beam will be deflected through mirrors and this laser is used to sinder the powder so it will make a uh, it will bond the powder molecules together to make a solid mass i hope you understand it <coughs> this laser will deflect the light to the exact point where we need to make a solid object and the all other remaining part will be left uh, like left as it is like powder is pow as the powder it is so once this layer is completed then this thing will the print bed will move down by uh, for example 25 micron or 50 micron depending upon what resolution we need and then this roller will again fill a uniform layer on top of the uh, previously printed layer and this laser will again cinder the area only which we need to have a solid mass of material <coughs> so this is a step by step process and once everything is completed then we will remove this uh, powder or remove the printed object and then we will go to the post processing stations okay so the major advantage of this sls machine is that unlike the previous two uh, mechanism it doesn't require any kind of support because the uh, uncindered powder material will itself act as a support material so the surface finish will be uh, like it's uh, not that much great as compared to sla uh, but it uh, it's like post processing will become a little bit easier and those are not used the powder can we can reuse it that's one of the advantage these are the different kind of materials that we can use it, we can use plastic we can use nylon metal ceramic and composite there are wide range of materials which are like new new materials are inventing in each each day so now we can see some of the commercially available sls machine this is one known as fuse uh, this is actually a fuse one 3d printer a sls 3d printer which work on the exact same mechanism that we just discussed we have a, a build chamber or a powder chamber here and uh, this thing will actually heat the material like the chamber will be heated to a particular level and then uh, like after every layer there will be a build platform which will down by uh, for example 100 micron or that then it will again cinder the part where we need the like solid mass and it will continue this is actually a desktop uh, SLS machine and here we will be having a industrial SLS machine which is uh, quite big and which can run for a long time as same as SLA machine here also we need post processing here what will we do is that once we take the part out of print chamber then we will uh, bring it to a post processing unit then we will first remove the excess material that is attached to the attached to the uh, printed part those parts uh, we will be using high speed compressed air to remove those excess part and then we will be uh, taking those clean part to another sintering machine which will heat it up a little bit more so uh, like the particles will be perfectly bonded together and these kind of printers won't have that much high level of uh, material accuracy or high level of uh, print accuracy so we will be taking it to an uh, sandblasting chamber or something and then we will be getting a relatively better quality or better surface finish than earlier so that's all for today thank you